We depend on law enforcement agents every day to serve and protect citizens and the community. It is important to understand how they operate, what the policies are, and what you should do when something goes awry. Today we look at the Prince George's County Sheriff's Department. What should you expect when deputies knock at your door? How should the deputy conduct himself or herself? And what should you do if you experience misconduct? What are your rights? We want you to know what should you expect and what you should not expect to happen should deputies ever come to your door. Grab your pen and paper. You will want to take a note. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mine. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Welcome to the Clarion Call Show. I'm Janice Hatcher Liggins, your host. As citizens, what should be our role or relationship with law enforcement? How do we ensure citizens' rights are guarded? Today, we take a close look at the Sheriff's Department and what we should expect when deputies come to our door. What do we do if we see conduct or of a deputy that we believe is out of order? With us today, to bring clarity to the matter is the Sheriff of Prince George's County, Mr. Melvin High. Also with us is Mr. Mark Spencer, Inspector General with the Office of the Sheriff. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm glad to have you come on the show because we are gonna talk about a matter that is a little sensitive, um, but also very delicate and important to all of the citizens in our county. So thank you uh, for coming on. I wanna start off with asking you, just to remind us, and for those who may not know, what is actually the role of the sheriff? The sheriff has the responsibility to answer certain calls for service from our citizens, to serve our court-ordered uh, documents um, where the court has made a judicial decision that these documents need to be served on some person within our community mm -hmm. and to um, manage our court security is the basic role of our sheriff's office. We also critically in that response uh, to calls is our domestic violence effort to prevent uh, domestic violence in our community. And Mark, I know you are uh, Inspector General. Yes. So what is the role of the Inspector General? Well, Janice, thanks for having us on. And uh, I'm a, an attorney, first in. Um, the role of my role every day uh, is to ensure that, one, our deputies, and we have um, a few hundred deputies, but we also have civilian personnel. And the first responsibility that I have every day is to see that uh, we are operating within our own rules, our own standards, our own protocols. But beyond that, uh, that we are responsive when citizens have a complaint, uh, and that overall uh, we are uh, a professional law enforcement organization that's operating at law enforcement best practices and that we are operating uh, at the constitutional standard. Okay. Okay, and I know there's a third position in your office, the assistant sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is that person's role? Well, I have uh, a person, his title is chief assistant sheriff, mm -hmm. and that person is the second in command to me, the sheriff, and he has the basic responsibility of running our organization day to day to make sure that all of these duties we have, that we actually go out and do those and do them in a way that our community expects. Okay, okay. So we have today, um, we're gonna talk about three different uh, occasions 
when someone felt a little bit uncomfortable when deputies did come to their door. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, guests on the phone and we'll be reaching out to them through phone interview. And up first we have Miss J. And so Miss J, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. So um, have you had sheriff deputies come to your home looking for someone to arrest? I have. And how many deputies came to your home? Only one came to my door. Okay. Uh, on a scale of one to five, where five is excellent, how respectful were th was the deputy? Um, respectful five. Okay. And did any of the deputies show you, or did that deputy show you mm -hmm. an arrest warrant or a search warrant? He did not. Um, did the agent threaten to take you to jail for any reason? No. And did the deputy use profanity in your home? He did not. During the incident, were you the only female, you as a female, the only adult in the home? Um, my daughter and my son were in the house, and my son um, is the reason they came, and he's 26. He's 26, okay. Um, did they actually arrest him? They did. And... Um, how did the conduct of the deputy make you feel? Well, actually, I felt very helpless because I, um, I did, it was in the middle of the night. We were asleep, and um, my, my son's not a criminal. It was for child support, which they later found out wasn't, it was incorrect. But I was just, I felt helpless. There was nothing I can do. But he did explain to me why he was there, and um, I, um, although it didn't make me feel comfortable, I didn't know where they were taking him. I don't think he was, I, I'm not sure, but I didn't think that he could give me a uh, destination. Mm -hmm. So I had to really look around, check around, and call around to find out where they had mm -hmm. taken him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what do you believe others need to know um, should deputies come to their door? Well, number one, I, I believe that because uh, we are a society that believes in you're innocent unless you're proven guilty, I have no idea why they have to come in the middle of the night. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, Ms. J, um, anything else you want to add? No, except for I'd just like to say I'm very grateful that you're having this program because people don't know what to do. This is the very first time that anything like that had happened. Mm. So I wasn't familiar with any kind of processes. I didn't know what to do. And I think if even if the only thing that comes out of this is to let citizens know what they can do, it's going to be a success. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time to, to be on the call with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. So, Ms. J had uh, what I consider a, uh, a benign, rather favorable experience. Even though she was upset, nervous, helpless, it still was, for, you know, I think overall, a fairly good experience. Yes. Um, so you have, as sheriff, um, created some value statements Absolutely. that you want the deputies to use as their banner going Absolutely. forward. Can you share those with us? Absolutely. We have um, five stated values, and if citizens will come to our website, they can see uh, we try to be transparent as an organization. They will see what our various values are, what our vision and mission is for the organization. And so certainly um, respectful service um, to, to build citizens' trust, mm. to always act and conduct ourselves professionally, to operate with the highest of integrity, okay. and, uh, and to honor the basic reason we exist, to provide great public service. Mm -hmm. Those are our basic values that we 
share with citizens and so we want citizens to know that's why we put them on our website mm -hmm. and we publish them etc so that they can gauge us and gauge the response of our deputies mm -hmm. so when our deputies respond and if they feel like they haven't been respected if we haven't been trustworthy or honest mm -hmm. in our conduct or performance mm -hmm. they can measure that call me the sheriff mm -hmm. or the various members of our organization because we want to know that it's a hard thing to hear Mm. when our people don't perform at the highest level, but it's what I need to hear yes. so that I can work to correct that. Wonderful, wonderful. So I think we have our second person, uh, Miss D. Do we have? Okay, so we're gonna hold up a little bit for, for Miss D. Okay. Um, when the um, you mentioned that um, what you want the residents to be able to um, feel comfortable that the deputies are are living up to the role and the level of the of your values. Um, how do you know currently? How do you know what mechanisms do you currently have in place to be able to determine that? Well, what we do is we have a number of opportunities for citizens to interact with us. Starting with me, the sheriff, I have a citizens advisory council that's made up of significant people of standing in our community that certainly have an opportunity to come and have a conversation with me every month about their observations, what they've heard from their fellow citizens about our conduct and performance, and to share that with me. We've created an accountability process. In fact, uh, Mr. Spencer, our Inspector General, until my administration in the Sheriff's Office, we did not have a position called an Inspector General mm -hmm. where they're supposed to audit, look at all of the complaints that come into our agency. And thank, thankfully, we have few complaints that come in. Mm -hmm. So I want to give kudos to my men and women for their performance, I think. Typically, the performance is what you heard from Ms. J. Mm -hmm. um, but, but on those rare occasions where our people step out of bounds, then we have an inspector general and an internal investigative process that looks at every complaint, assesses it in, in a fair and honest and appropriate legal way, and then bring that standard of best practice to bear on that issue. Mm -hmm and say, did we perform according to our values and the best practice standards in law enforcement? Um, I think it's interesting that um, Ms. J nor Ms. D, our next caller, um, wanted to come onto the show. They wanted to share their stories, but they did not want to do it on the show. Sure. They did not want to be seen. Absolutely. Uh, Ms. J shared with me that uh, for privacy reasons, she did not want to come. I understand. Uh, Ms. D shared that um, she wanted to come, but her husband, who was not home at the time of the deputy visit, her husband later was leery of retaliation mm -hmm. um, for their son. Absolutely. And that alone, there's, there's, that needs to be checked out. That needs yes. to, no one should feel a fear of retaliation Absolutely. for speaking up on an issue that they feel like their Absolutely. rights were violated Absolutely. or disrespected. Absolutely. So how do we handle that? Well, let me just say first is that I certainly agree with you and uh, I want to dissuade the view of any citizen that they're going to be retaliated because they bring forth a complaint mm -hmm. about our conduct. And so I want them to know that I give them my assurance that that's not an issue that will happen to them. And so they can be forthcoming and tell us what it is that they wish to complain about. Okay. Uh, I think we have Ms. D on the phone now. So uh, Ms. D, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Wonderful, wonderful. So um, I'm gonna ask you a few questions and if you can answer each of them, I'd appreciate it. Um, okay. Did you have sheriff deputies come to your home looking for someone to arrest? Yes, I did. How many, many? How many, yes, how many uh, deputies came? Wow, it was like, um, I think it was about 10 or 
There was, it was a lot of them. Wow. How many people were they looking for in your home? One person. And on a scale of one to five, where five is excellent, how respectful were the deputies? I would put it at a, at a uh, well, at a one. Okay. Because I was basically cursed at. Do you want to tell, share with us what they said? Um, uh, one of the officers, I mean, the deputies told me basically to just shut the F up. Mm. Okay. And I responded with my response because that was just rude. And I'm a parent. And right. I didn't. So that was necessary. Did any of the deputies show you an arrest warrant or a search warrant? No, not when they first came in. They just kept telling me to just be quiet and come downstairs and, and shut my mouth. And then that didn't, I didn't see that until after they were leaving out. You, you, the search warrant? Yeah. Was it, do you remember if it was a search warrant or an arrest warrant? Um, it if, was a search. It was a search. Okay. Search uh, and, you know, basically a search and, and a, a search and arrest. Yeah, it was a search and arrest for they Okay. Mm -hmm. um, did any of the deputies threaten to take you to jail for any reason? Well, yeah. They just basically told us if we don't cooperate, you know, that would happen. And that's why I said they were just nasty. Okay. And um, I was going to ask, did they, any of them use profanity, but you've already covered that one. Um, yeah. And during the incident, were you a female in your home alone with no adult male present at the time? No, my husband was at work. So there was no other, okay. And how did the conduct of the deputies make you feel? Just like bullying. I mean, it just made me feel, uh, I, was, I mean, I was afraid because yeah. I just wanted to make sure I acted and conducted myself in a way where I didn't get, um, you know, hands put on me or, mm. you know, anything like that. So I just basically complied. But, you know, I did respond to one of the officers because I just felt that it was unnecessary, mm. uh, one of the sheriffs, uh, because it was unnecessary to speak like that. Mm. And it did you... Necessary. Did you report the incident? Why or why not? No, I didn't because, uh, again, I was just uh, concerned uh, for the, um, the person that they came into the home looking for. So, okay. And I didn't know whether they would, how they would, would you know, uh, retaliate or act with us for saying anything. Mm. What do you believe others need to know before a deputy comes to their home? Well, um, I believe they should basically know to just comply with them. Um, make sure you pay attention to everything, name, um, get the full, ask for the forms when they come into your home. Um, and then, you know, just make sure that so anything, nothing will happen to you. Just comply with them. Don't be smart or, you know, negative or acting the way they're acting because it's not, you're, you're not going to win okay. because they'll be ready to say you act in this type of way and this is why we're taking you out. So I just basically did what they asked me to, but it was just not necessary for the cursing and the disrespect. That didn't need to happen. Okay. All right, Miss D, we appreciate you on the phone with us today. All right? Thank you. Thank you so much. So, yes. Jen, if I could, I'd like to describe what the legal standards are and what the process is in terms of how the deputies come okay. to your home. The first thing is I'd like to apologize to the caller for the profanity. That's unprofessional at any level and at any time. And, and so our people are trained not to do that. And respect gets us so much further down the road than disrespect, of course. Um, not knowing more than what we just heard, I will say that, yes, the deputies are trained to take control of a situation. And it depends on the circumstances. 
Now, I do want to make it clear that we're a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week operation, and our deputies are literally serving, process, and making arrests around the clock. Mm -hmm. Depending upon the hour and depending upon the circumstances, it's not unusual for our deputies to show up in the wee hours of the morning, mm -hmm. particularly if they've been looking for this person, they managed to focus on a particular place, and if there's some indication that that person may resist or pose some danger. More likely than not, that's when the deputies are going to make an early hour arrest. Why? Because generally speaking, the experience is people really aren't, they've, their guards are down, mm -hmm. and they're not really looking for law enforcement to appear at those hours. Um, when our deputies um, prepare to go out on the street and serve process, and we're serving process of all kinds, and remember, this is all court-generated. It's not that the officer, the sheriff wants you, it's that the courts have issued a document, mm -hmm. an arrest warrant, saying that you failed to appear or you've broken the law and they're looking for you, they haven't been able to find you, and the sheriff's are tasked with securing your presence for the court. And that's the general process. We have a warrant investigation unit that does background research on each and every person subject to a warrant. We try to identify as much information as possible so that we're as accurate as possible looking for where you are. There's a difference between an arrest warrant as you've identified and a search warrant. What is that difference? The arrest warrant is the foundation document that the court issues when you are wanted before the court to answer for a criminal charge or to answer for a civil matter that probably you failed to appear to court or somehow the docket has shown that you haven't responded to the court's call. Generally speaking, an arrest warrant conveys the authority on a law enforcement officer, a sheriff's deputy, uh, to arrive at the principal place of residence of a person and enter and make an arrest if that's necessary. Most times, when our deputies arrive at the door and they knock, they explain why they're there, and the person usually surrenders, goes peaceably, and there's no problem. Every now and then, people don't want to be found, and they want to resist. In that situation, then the question becomes, is that a place where they usually reside? In the law, we ask if they have dominion or control. Is it their apartment that they're renting? Is it their home that they're paying the mortgage? Have they lived there for a long time? If that answer is yes, then law enforcement has a right to enter and make an arrest. Mm -hmm. In the case where it's someone else's home, a third party. I'm gonna ask you to hold on to that point because okay. I wanna pick it up right there when we All come right. back, okay? So what policies and safeguards are or should be in place to ensure deputy conduct reflects the sheriff's value statements? What rights do you have as a citizen when things do go wrong? That's next. Stay tuned. I'm a wife, a sister, and a grandfather. I'm an office clerk. I'm a research analyst, dance fitness instructor, actor. I'm a copywriter. I'm a veteran. I have lupus, cerebral palsy. I'm blind. And I'm working in a job I love. I love. Because I was given a chance to contribute my skills and talents. To show that my disability is only one part of who I am. Who I am. Who I am. At work, it's what people can do that matters. For more information, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation on what to expect when deputies come to your door and how we hold agencies accountable for misconduct. With us again is Melvin High, Sheriff of Prince George's County, and Mark Spencer, Inspector General for the Office of the Sheriff. So just before we took the break, Mark, you were explaining, um, you were giving a point about the, the 
difference between the search and the arrest warrant. Correct. So the search warrant is used when... The search warrant gets the deputy to the door, and if you're the renter, if you're the homeowner, if you're, that's the place where you lay your head regularly, and we have reasonable evidence to indicate that, then law enforcement has the right to enter the home to make an arrest based solely on that arrest warrant. Okay. When the deputy arrives at the door, and it's not that person's principal place of residence, they're a visitor, uh, they're sometime uh, occupant, but they don't have dominion and control over the space. It really is someone else's principal place mm -hmm. of, of ownership, of residence. Then the deputy cannot uh, make an entry and even a forcible entry. Then it's up to the deputy uh, to seek a search warrant from the court, mm -hmm. uh, identifying the information that they have up to that point. And then with a court order search warrant, they have the right to enter the premises to look for that person and to effect the arrest warrant that they had previously. Okay. So I'm um, guest number three uh, because a deputy came to my door. Sure. And in my situation, um, they came to look for my son who hasn't lived in my home for years. They came at 5.15 in the morning. I didn't have a problem with the time of day. There were five of them who came. I didn't have a problem with how many came. But they never showed me any pa They did show me papers, but the papers were like this. <laughs> I never saw one word. They sure. just rolled up. Sure. And I asked repeatedly for it. They went on to search, and I said, but you can't search my house without an arrest warrant. And needless to say, they did. And I ended up taking the papers out of their hand after they were going all over my house, at which time one of the officers literally took his forearm and pushed me back, three okay. feet backwards, up against the wall. Now, well, without me addressing your case specifically, let me tell, tell you what the law would say. So law says that you standing in the door and having the apparent... I'm not in the door. Well, They're in my house. Right. All five of them were in the house. Four of them were in but the house. But when you hold your hand up, for example, and you say, this is my home, and my son, right, may or may not be here, but this is not his home, then the deputies are on notice that they have to ask further questions. They have to do some more research to determine whether or not your statement is true. And if it is, then they must go and secure a search warrant. But they didn't. Okay, but here's okay. what the law says. Okay. What the law says is that if law enforcement has a valid arrest warrant for you, they have no obligation to show you an arrest warrant. The fact that they are officers of the court and make that statement empowers them not only to make an arrest, but to enter and make a forcible arrest if necessary. And that's an unusual circumstance. It does happen, but that's unusual. Most people comply. In the search warrant situation, the law says that the officer at the time of the execution of the search warrant is not obligated to show you a document. But the best practice and the general practice is once the search has concluded that they should leave you a copy of the search warrant. Well, I did not get left a copy of the search warrant, arrest warrant, or any other warrant. I, they, there was profanity. And, and so and I I'm would encourage you in that situation, just as we heard from the other caller. You can call me right. at our office. We would encourage you to make a citizen's complaint. Yeah. And what that does is it obligates us to perform a full investigation, which I review. Okay. And then we tell you what the outcome of that investigation is. We are so out of time. It's not <laughs> funny. I am so sorry that we can't finish. And, and our, our cameraman suggested maybe a second show. I might have to take him up on that. But thank All you right. for coming in. Thanks I for having appreciate us. it. Thank you for having us. When you see something wrong, say something. It's your right as a taxpaying citizen to bring attention to any incident that violates your rights or fall below the policies and values of the Sheriff's Department. If you're not sure what to do, reach out to the Clarion Call. Our Coordination of Care Division will document your incident and connect you with the resources and support you need. That's it for now, and we hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time, won't you, for the Clarion Call. Until then, I'm Janice Liggins. Blessings to you.